Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, but before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Life Force Galaxy Smash. Oh yeah! Today we're going to bring to you 1987's Stage Fright, directed by Michel Suave. He did a few notable movies, The Church, which we covered, you can click the link above, and Cemetery Man, which you can click the link above. We did that one too. This movie stars Barbara Cupacitti, and she was in The New York Ripper by the master Fulci. Mm -hmm. She was also in The Church and Cemetery Man. You can click those links above again. <laughs> Giovanni Lombardo Radici is in this. He was in City of the Living Dead, as well as The Church <laughs> and Cannibal Ferro. And last, of course, we have to mention Sting is in this. He was in The Bride, he was in... Oh, uh, whoa, no, I don't think Sting is in this. Yeah, that's Sting, that's totally Sting in this. No, I don't think so. Uh, look it up. Neither is this. <laughs> For you. Stage Fright starts off with a woman loitering on the streets. She's walking back and forth. You get the sense she's maybe a prostitute, right? She starts smoking. Do You see these hands come around her neck and pull her into this alleyway and cut! And it turns out that this is part of an elaborate play being rehearsed. And they're doing a musical about a killer called the Night Owl. The producer is a bit of an asshole. Breathing down their throats. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't really give a shit about the artistic side of things. He just wants returns for the investors. One of the actresses, Alicia, she ends up spraining her ankle. Betty goes and takes her to the hospital. She takes... Alicia to this psychiatric hospital, this mental hospital. <laughs> Thinking it's a real hospital. <laughs> yeah, and then after when they figured out, she's like, oh, well, whatever. A hospital's a hospital. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> not well, really. Can't you get someone to look at her ankle? It's like, it's not that kind of hospital. <laughs> they kind of befriend one of the doctors in the lobby. So the doctor takes them back to his office and they see in one of the cells, lying in bed restrained, and he turns over and looks at him, and, and they learn that it's this uh, famous serial killer, actually, Irving Wallace. The doctor sees Alicia groping her yeah. in too. <laughs> he sends him on their way, and on the way back, Betty looks into the cell again, Irving Wallace's cell, and it looks like Irving is sleeping. This orderly turns around in bed, and he's got a needle in his neck. Uh-oh. They make it back to the theater. Betty stays behind and starts pissing down rain. The cat jumps on her lap and scares the shit out of her, and so she gets out of the car, and all of a sudden, bling, whack! A pickaxe goes right into her mouth, and she falls down, and she drops the key to the theater. Alicia goes back into the theater and instantly gets fired by the asshole director for taking off in the middle of rehearsals. He's all smoking those cheap cigars. <laughs> Pissed off, she storms out, goes back to the car, finds Betty dead in the rain with a fucking pickaxe sticking out of her face. Cops come and there's all these people, reporters coming in, take the body out. During this whole media scrum, the director gets this idea of actually changing the play last minute to base it on this real killing and this real killer, Irving Wallace. He convinces all the actors to stay even later, <laughs> after they've had their friend murdered, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to work on this play that he's now going to be rewriting. That takes days yeah. and all that, like, <laughs> yeah. you can't just do it in one night. The director tells one of the girls, Corrine, to lock all the doors and hide the keys so no one can get out and get away from rehearsal. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> yeah. Everyone goes to get changed. The guy who's playing the killer in that owl costume gets killed by Wallace, and he assumes his costume. They're rehearsing the show when everyone's on stage. Killer comes out. Yeah, and he's like, okay, come okay, on, come yeah. on. A little faster, go on. <laughs> Pulls up the knife and starts stabbing her for real. They're like, ah, oh, this is great, great performance. <laughs> they don't realize he's killing her for real. <laughs> Then they do realize he's really fucking killing her when they see all the blood and everything and he takes off into like the wings. The girl who got killed on stage is Kareem, the girl who hid the key. Yeah. So they don't know where the key is to get the fuck out of this theater. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Let's get out of here. Ernie. Ernie, what are you doing? Ernie! They all lock themselves in one of the dressing rooms and try to think of what the hell to do here. Two of the guys think, well, okay, let's go look for the key. Everyone else will stay locked in this dressing room. So they 
head off to go look for the key. Irving Wallace starts banging on the door to get in, punches right through the door and grabs a guy. <laughs> He's like, well, how is he going to kill him like that? Well, yeah, he takes his drill and drills right through the door, through this guy's fucking gut. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a crazy kill. The other guys can't find the key. They come back to find this guy dead. And they're like, fuck, where did he get this drill from? Oh, there's a carpentry department in this theater. So they decide to go to the carpentry department to get weapons to arm themselves to then go hunt down the killer. And that's where we're going to end the plot. If you want to see how Stage Fright ends, keep watching. It really ramps up from here. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that you'll notice about this movie is that it's super 80s right off the bat, right? So 80s. <laughs> but in a good way. In, and the, in the best way. Just a matter of setting. Yeah. And the fact that it takes place in a theater, it's all turned up a notch for the sense of theatrics. Yeah, exactly. Like in the beginning when she walks in, she's got that hair, that wig on, and the yeah. stockings, and everything's all neon. Well, that's because it's a set. Mm -hmm. It's not real life. And the fact that it's this wicked theater, there's tons of places for the killer to hide, right? And for the victims to go too. In the rafters, subfloor, under the stage, around the curtains, everywhere. The there's, dressing rooms. There's tons yeah. of places. It's also neat how the killer can hide in plain sight. Use the owl costume, right? Or he could use other costumes. Or he could use other costumes too. There's yeah. an entire dressing room and shit loaded with costumes. I love the scenes that take place in the rafters and stuff. It's great. What a great setting for chasing down a killer is so cool. Another cool thing is that the killer's mask or like headpiece is super memorable, yeah, right? This is great. one of the biggest hallmarks of the movie, right? Hear the name Stage Fright. Oh, you think of that fucking owl head. Right away, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Black suit yeah. with the mask is perfect. <laughs> Anything more I think would be overkill. The atmosphere of this movie is great. Like we mentioned, the theater setting with all the vivid colors, super 80s neon, bright colors, very Italian giallo style lighting. <laughs> And I love the fact that it's pouring rain all night during this film. And it's just buckets of, like you said, sheets of lead rain. <laughs> yeah. It adds to the isolation of it all. Claustrophobic rain almost. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like even if they did kind of get out, they wouldn't want to leave because it's raining so yeah. hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> and talk about atmosphere near the end where he's kind of off to almost everybody. And he's sitting in that chair taking in what he's done and like appreciating all the bodies that he's set up and that cat jumps on his lap yeah petting the cat all nice and all those feathers are flying around it's like such a cool surreal dreamlike sort of dream like scene, sequence eh? and it's kind of beautiful it's all about death it's still a beautiful scene the characters for this movie too every one of them and there's a lot there's a lot of people in this movie Every one of them is memorable. They all have their own part to play in the movie. Work off of each other perfectly too, right? Right from the beginning of the movie, you get the dynamic between all the characters right away. Like they mm -hmm. just nail that. So you know kind of the hierarchy here, you know? Yeah. The director's a fucking asshole. You got the producer guy in there too. Yeah, he's a sleaze ball. He's about to get killed by Wallace. The first thing he does is pull out all this money to try to pay him off. <laughs> yeah. Well, that doesn't fucking work. This movie at face value seems like it's just your standard slasher, but I don't think it really is. It changes a lot of things up. Yeah. Like the fact that they all get weapons and decide to go hunt down the killer. You rarely see that in slashers. Usually they're hiding mm -hmm. and just kind of waiting to be killed off. But they're like, fuck it. Let's go get weapons from the carpentry department, all these axes and shit. Yeah. Let's go find this guy. Yeah, they're not really stupid in this movie because yeah. they even say it's like, well, we need to all stick together. There are a couple of parts where they split up, but yeah. then they realize what they've done. They and have they... to stick together. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty rare too. Usually they split up in yeah. ones or twos and then get picked off. Also the fact that the final girl, the main character in this, she does sprain her leg, but it's not like running away, like, ah! Yeah, yeah. You know, and then she's limping after. She sprains her ankle in the first, what, 10 minutes of the movie? Mm -hmm. So it's like not your typical structure, you know? Mm -hmm. She's injured, but she's injured from the beginning. Yeah, Not yeah. while running away. She has encounters with the killer. She's close yeah. with the killer. 
but the killer never notices her. When she hides in the shower there. Yeah, and it's like, all, all he has to do is turn a little bit and he can see her. Yeah. But that doesn't happen, right? It's like, ooh, it, it really puts you on the edge of your seat. The music for this movie, it fits the movie perfectly. And there's so many changes in the music yeah. too, right? Yeah. You got your super typical 80s synth. The opening theme is just like, oh yeah, yeah. it's like fucking watching <laughs> an 80s action movie yeah. with the saxophone. Yeah, you get right into it. And then for like the horror scenes, it gets scary. Yeah. And for the action scenes, it gets it starts jumping. It gets yeah. gets you going. And it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So 80s. <laughs> it's great. The kills in this movie are also fantastic. You know, the pickaxe through the fucking face. Oh, yeah. But he stabs that woman on stage. I like how he does it all slow. And he keeps doing it. Well, you know, and it's like, oh, it looks like a great performance. But it's like... Pretty hard to watch, actually. Yeah. Drills the guy right through the door. Oh, that's a great a good, kill. <laughs> that's a good one, yeah. The part where a girl falls through, like, the floor. And they're trying to pull her up. And they do pull her up, but it's only half of her. <laughs> you took a chainsaw to her, like, down below. Sawed her right in half. Yeah. <laughs> I met you in Tupelo. <laughs> <laughs> now you go down below. Is it soup yet? <laughs> And then they look down and they just see him down there with this chainsaw. Yeah. Like it's super creepy. Yeah, it's great. And it's lit really well, too, right? With that, the flashlight on yeah. him. He catches the director and he cuts his arm off. Yeah. <laughs> and then the chainsaw stops working. So then what does he do? He takes the axe that he had. Yeah, yeah and just... Brump. <laughs> takes his head right off. <laughs> it's great. And it's also cool, the killer in this has no motive. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need one. He just wants to fucking kill people. Yeah, yeah. It's established early on he's yeah. a psychopath. Yeah, there's no, it's not a revenge type thing. Just killing for the sake of killing. Exactly. Much like Michael Myers. The final act, too, is fucking phenomenal. Ramps up even more. You're really rooting for the final girl, too, in this, right? You really do, yeah. More so than most slashers, I'd say. They really hang the ending on almost on a thread. Literally hang. <laughs> yeah. And then there's also not one ending to this either. There's two. The double climax. Shot him right between the eyes. <laughs> it's what I did. Shot him right between the eyes. I said I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he says it like 20 times. Shot him right between the eyes. <laughs> so if you're in the mood for like just a fucking 80s fest yep. slasher, definitely check out Stage Fright if you haven't. It's a blast. It's one of the best, I think, Slashers that come out of the 80s is not part of like a big series or big franchise. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the better standalone slashers. Oh, exactly, yeah. And it definitely stands alone. Like, man, it stands out yeah. like a sore thumb for being awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not for being bad. No, it's fantastic. It's Fucking just fun. Great. It's got humor where it needs to have humor. Yep. Gore where there should be gore. Perfect. There's not too many bad things to say about this movie at all. Besides the fact that Sting isn't in it. <laughs> Until next time, keep drinking.